So first and foremost, Anne Heche's ex, James Tupper, is slamming rumors that the actress was, quote, crazy. James and Anne starred in the TV show Men in Trees together and dated for 11 years and also had a son. He recently thanked one of their co-stars who defended the late actress on Instagram. So Emily Burgle said people often asked her what it was like working with, quote, crazy Anne Heche. In her post, Emily said... Anne was not only a genius, but one of the most astoundingly focused and prepared actors I've ever worked with. She was talking about mental health before it was acceptable to talk about those struggles. In fact, Anne, Anne had addressed the stigma head on in her autobiography in 2001, Call Me Crazy, which is out of print and selling for more than $700 on Amazon. Wow. Um, okay, so let's just use this as a jumping off point, Tori. Do you feel that we are coming away from the almost like, you know, if w women are called crazy much more than men are called crazy, right? Anne H was called crazy. Russell Crowe can be obnoxious on set and he's just called obnoxious. Are we moving away from that in your opinion? I definitely think we are. And I think it's very important that words mean a lot. Verbiage means a lot. So the word hysteria, hysterical, does it remind you of any other word? Hysterectomy. It's about women's ovaries. So the idea of being hysterical and hysteria from the Latin roots of it or the Greek or Roman roots of it, excuse me for not knowing, comes from being a woman. So that's why you see, oh, she's just being hysterical. It's a very sexist way of putting someone down without actually hearing them. It's almost like gaslighting. Crazy is one of those words. I have a lot of mental health problems. Y'all know that, right? I don't consider myself crazy because I find that phrase a bit offensive. And used call me crazy on her autobiography. But I think you're right. Right now, crazy to me feels inappropriate and also not as nuanced as we are in but 2022. I, I feel like crazy has transitioned to address anything that we don't want to address as people. So when we cover a school shooting, people write in saying, "Ma, that's really crazy. It's not crazy. It's based on a series of decisions right. that were made by a group of people that were voted in. And this is the result. That's not crazy. When we don't want to address something, we, in the case of Anne Heche, it's difficult to unpack somebody's life. You know, the, 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 the beauty, we've all worked with people that are geniuses and there is, there's, a, uh, there, there's another side to that that sometimes they're difficult to work with. Sometimes they are a little out there. You don't want to talk about that so you just say, her death is so crazy and it's not. It was an issue with substance abuse. It was an issue with lack of help. And sometimes people can't go on anymore in their bodies anymore. Their bodies are done. Their minds are done. And we don't want to talk about that because it's super unpleasant. So we just call it crazy. So let's be honest about what we're talking about here and the fact that everything is nuanced. And people don't want to take that time. So they just throw the word crazy yeah. at it and keep it's it It's a moving. big, broad brush. But, you should, right. but it's thrown more at women than it is oh, at men. Oh, absolutely. If because you call me crazy, and again, someone with a lot of mental health issues as well, if you call me crazy, if you tell me to relax, you're going to take me from a zero to a ten. I should be 100%. more accountable for my own emotions, and I shouldn't allow that to take me from a zero to a 10, but that's very triggering to a lot of women because of the historical context. What would you say? It's such an umbrella word, right? You could use it for multiple things, and it means multiple different things to different people, right? I might throw it out and be like, oh my God, what did you just do? You put chocolate in your water? That's crazy. Right. You know what I mean? And then you take it to a level that I wasn't even meaning, right? right. But like in Anne Heche's case, first of all, I want to put Anne Heche let her rest. Know, you know what I mean? You. Like we keep coming up with all yeah. these other things. She didn't hurt anybody else. Unfortunately, she hurt herself and a woman's house was ruined in the process. But if you'd said and someone was driving down Spear Boulevard and they were doing a hundred after they just did cocaine, it's, it's a little crazy to me, mm -hmm. right? I'm going to use the word. That's a little crazy to me. But if you use it, it to try to describe someone you like or yourself, then all of a sudden it's offensive and I'm the one offending you. Well, so it just, again. It is discernment. Yes. You know what I mean? And so just like if someone has a problem with it, I'll just stay away from it. How about that? How about that? <laughs> well, you have good just intentions. Be People need to... I Discernment. Okay, so Adele is giving us a new explanation, okay, as to why she canceled her Las Vegas residency at the very last minute. Speaking to Elle magazine, she said the show had no soul. She added the stage setup wasn't right and lacked intimacy and was very disconnected from her and the band. At the time, she blamed COVID for production delays and crew issues. She says the new show will tell the story of the beginning of her career to now.
Is no. this, what do you, okay, go ahead. Not a good look. Why? And I love Adele. I'm like rolling in the deep with Adele. But not only did you have people at the hotel, you told us specifically in a crying video that you were gutted because it was COVID related. And now you're saying it was because it wasn't perfect. Uh, the lying, the cover up is always fishier than the truth. Have said but, the truth or don't say the truth. You, it just, it doesn't look good for a lot of people who spend a ton of money. I definitely agree with you. But like, what do they say? He who was without sin cast That's the, the first, first stone. Yeah. As in Nobody in this room used COVID as an excuse to get out of something. Dude, not for so many people like, waste money. I, I'm not saying that she didn't, that it wasn't right. I'm just saying if she had put that show on and that show was not what it should have been, we would have been covering it just like when we covered Justin Timberlake and his whack dance moves. <laughs> and that was played millions of they times were really bad. because they were he bad. should not have been it up there really in Dockers. Yeah. So when you go out, when, when, if she goes out with the equivalent of Dockers as a background group, she's going to get roasted and she has a, a reputation uphold. And if this, al this next album hits, all will be forgotten, Jeff, Ooh, I, I promise. Disagree. Why can't both be true? Why can't some people on her set had COVID and she also felt that the show was soulless? Because when she came out, she was so specific, like, we, it's COVID. Maybe she didn't have time to unpack it all. But she I'm left us a four-minute message of us talking and talking. If you're going to explain it, then explain it. But it feels now like a cover-up. It feels weird. And she's a perfectionist. I get it. But then do a, soul, a quiet show or do something for these people who clearly feel like they were duped. And I would feel that way, too. Am I too sensitive? I don't know. No, she. I think she, she, she could have pulled that trigger a little bit earlier before people got to Los Angeles or before they got to Vegas and say, listen, I'm a perfectionist. I want to put on the best show for you guys. It being COVID, I don't want anyone to travel here. Also, the show is just not ready. We are not ready to go on. Save your tickets. I promise when we come back out, I'm going to have a killer show. But don't say right. COVID right. and then yeah. four months later right. be like, it wasn't ready either. Come out with the truth. Just people always want to like, just say the truth. You know what I mean? This truth shall set you free, since we're doing quotes up here. There we go. Good. <laughs> Everyone's are on point except mine, though. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Ashton Kutcher is revealing that he recently became a quote-unquote whole new man. Speaking on Jimmy Kimmel Live, Ashton said he grew a mustache for his new film, Vengeance, but it had an unexpected effect on his marriage. He said his wife, Mila Kunis, actually liked the stash because he was like a different guy at home. Ooh, okay. So does a mustache change the man? Man, you well, should know. I think we have some evidence oh. here. I think there's a, oh. a, a little bit of a, a clip. Let, let's okay. take a look a little bit. Take a look. Uh, we are joined by four people on the panel. We got <laughs> Erica, we got Jeff, and Jeff's new mustache. <laughs> you know what? I'm keeping it. Are you Jeff or are you Giovanni? <laughs> you see that Jeff is channeling his inner Zorro. <laughs> Did you think of Jeff's stash? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, problematic. That's the only crime I see this week, really. Dude, not only is it a legal crime, as Mark just said, I hate it. <laughs> I was going to take it off this weekend, nope. but welcome to another well, week yeah. of Jeff's mustache. Still with us. Still with us. I'm telling you, it's getting a little scratchy, and uh, I'm getting a little tired of the jokes. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, did it change you as the man and did Jordan see you differently? You know what's weird? I forgot that I had, I only had it two weeks, by the way. That was that a was lot of jokes for two weeks. Yeah. yeah. And when I'd look in the mirror, I'd be like, wow. And everyone in my neighborhood, obviously everyone at work was like, mustache, mustache, mustache. Like just over and over and over again. Jordan liked it. She's like, I kind of want you to grow it. I was having fun with it. And then it just kind of got old because, and then I kind of brought it to like an interesting experiment because I'm like, People are just writing me because they don't like me. You know, like, I hate you and your mustache, right? <gasps> and they would say it, but it's like, we talk about women's hair, and if I'm like, oh, man, I'd like my wife to shave their legs, they're like, how dare you, you <laughs> male toxic pig. I'm like, yeah. everyone on the planet <laughs> told me I look like an idiot with my mustache. But, but if no. you tell a woman, a woman to shave anything on her body, you might, you go straight to hair health. And can I, can I, can I defend the mustache That's for a, a second? That's a double standard. You're it's right. It's a huge double standard. Right. Exactly. If, right. if you look at Jeff's pictures and that, it just like, it reminds me, I, I toured stand up 16, 17 years. Jeff looks like every guy that you would meet like south of the Mason Dixon line that you have the best night ever with, like just go out partying. He runs the whole town, <laughs> but you know, he gave you a fake name and it's like, you'll never talk after that. But just like Jeff, like that look you had, it's like, you would call, you'd be like, just call me Dallas. I'd be like, oh. <laughs> That's cool. Like we're going, we're going, That's uh, funny. There's a guy called some... Dallas Comedies that played for the. Uh, oh come Good on. One. Where Erica went to school, the, the Blue uh, Devils. North Northwestern. Oh. DePaul. DePaul, yeah. His name was Dallas Comedies. You're out there somewhere, buddy. That wanted to be my fake name when I was a kid. That's a great <laughs> name. Yeah. That yeah. is a good name.